Welcome to the Uno Minda Limited Q4 and F524 earnings conference call. This conference call may contain forward looking statements about the company which are based on the beliefs, opinions and expectations of the company as on date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone telephone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Sunil Bora, Group Chief Financial Officer from Uno Minda Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thanks, Zico. Good afternoon, everyone, and a warm welcome to all the participants. On the earnings call today, I am joined by my colleague, Uncle Modi. We have uploaded our financial results and investor presentation for Q4 on the stock exchanges and our company's website. I would like to begin by giving some insights on the economy, followed by the current scenario in the industry and our financial and operational performance for the quarter and FY24. Post that, we will open the floor for q and The global economy is displaying signs of recovery with inflation moderating and being projected to grow at a rate of 3.1%. However, amidst the prevailing global uncertainty, India's economy continues to exhibit remarkable resilience. In the third quarter of FY24, India achieved a growth rate of approximately 8.4%, surpassing expectations. This growth is driven by factors such as continued demand momentum across various industries and segments, increased government capital spending, rural demand also rebounding. India's manufacturing activity reached a 16-year high in March with PMI index of 59.1. This surge has created more jobs with unemployment data showing sharp reduction overall reflecting stronger growth in new orders. All these factors pointed to a sustained growth. India's GDP growth for FY24 is expected to be 7.6%, surpassing estimates by most global agencies. Speaking on the auto industry, the industry witnessed robust production volumes growing 10% year-on-year for FY24 and 21% year-on-year in Q4 FY24. With strong domestic demand and increasing share of exports worldwide, India has positioned itself as a global automotive hub, a promising future. In the passenger vehicle market, SUV share continued to grow, now holding a substantial 50% market share. During Q4 FY24, production volume increased by 10% year on year, reaching 13.4 lakh units. For FY24, the PV segment witnessed a growth of 10%, inching towards 5 million units. Notably, both retail sales and production of passenger vehicles achieved an all-time high in FY24. On the back of improved vehicle availability, a compelling model mix, and success successful launch of new models. Additionally, sustained demand growth in our under-penetrated India market, strategic marketing efforts by OEM for the government investment in road infrastructure contributed to the overall sales and production growth. Moving on to two-wheeler segment, in Q4 FY24, the production volume stood at 55.24 lakh units, delivering a strong growth of 26% on a year-on-year -year basis. For the year ending March 2024, the segment achieved highest production in the last four years with 21.4 million units, recording a 10% YOI growth fueled by improved rural demand, enhanced model availability, the introduction of new products, and a positive market sentiment, alongside the burgeoning EV market and strategic premium segment launches. On the CV front, for the quarter ended March 24, the production volume stood at 2.88 lakhs as compared to 2.9 lakhs in the same quarter last year. The segment is witnessing stable volumes. However, our outlook remains optimistic. With expected upswing in industrial and manufacturing activities, the segment is poised for growth. For FY24, the production volume stood at 10.66 lakhs, a growth of 3% on a YOY basis. The growth is attributed to the segment's adeptness in leveraging government tenders, improved road connectivity, and strategic bulk business. Talking about electrification, in March 24, India achieved a remarkable milestone with electric two-wheeler sales surpassing 1,36,000 units, marking an impressive 50% YOI growth. Throughout the entire financial year, sales soared to nearly 
9.4 lakh units reflect, reflecting a substantial 30% year on year increase. This surge was partially driven by customers pre purchasing vehicles ahead of the expiration of the PM2 subsidy, complemented by year end discounts. On conclusion of PM2, the government has announced a fund limited scheme with a total outlay of 500 crore for the period of four months with effect from 1st April 24 to 31st of July 24 for faster adoption of electric two wheelers and three wheelers to provide further impetus to the green mobility and development of electric vehicle manufacturing ecosystem in the country. The road to electrification is inevitable and India is poised for substantial growth with strong emphasis on sustainability and thrust on local production. Industry outlook. Heading into FY25, the Indian auto industry is poised for growth amidst a mix of optimism and challenges. The excitement around new product launches, particularly electric vehicles, sets up our looking tone. Manufacturers are gearing up with better supply chains and an array of models to meet diverse consumer demand. Economic growth, favorable government policies, and an anticipated good monsoon are expected to fuel demand, especially in the rural areas and the CV sector, which is closely linked to infrastructure projects and economic activity. Market sentiment is cautiously optimistic, with the industry banking on improved customer engagement and financing schemes to boost sales. However, it faces challenges like high base in PV segment and intense competition. The focus is on overcoming these hurdles with innovation and strategic market engagement, aiming for a balanced growth across all segments. Coming to financial and operational performance, uh, you may refer to slide number five. We have recently secured allotment of strategic land parcel of around 94 acres from SSIDC at IMT Karkoda in Haryana. This will help expedite our ongoing and future expansions. A part of this land has been designated for the Greenfield Alloy Wheel Plant of 120,000 wheels per month, announced in Q2 FY24. Post the groundbreaking ceremony, the work has started at the site. As you know, we have been proactively securing land parcels in all major auto hubs to be ready to meet growing demand. Last year, Uno Minda had acquired 86 acres of land at Kade City Industrial Park, Pune, followed by recent acquisition of 37 acres in Hosur, Tamil Nadu and now 94 acres in IMT, Karpoda, Ariana. While we continue to evaluate uh, more land at other locations, the proactive land acquisition and greenfield projects demonstrate our commitment to staying ahead of the curve in the rapidly evolving Indian auto landscape. During the quarter, we entered into technical license agreement with Star Charge Energy PT Limited to manufacture and sale of electric vehicle supply equipments in India further building on the e 4 wheel specific portfolio. We will discuss this in details in subsequent slides. We have completed purchase of 26% stake in Minda Westport Technologies Limited in April 24, increasing stake to 76%. Minda Westport has now become a subsidiary and will be consolidated in financials from Q1 f 25 The compressed natural gas powered vehicles in India have increased by 32% in f 24 in line with increasing CNG penetration. Minda Westport revenues have also grown by 156% to 277 crores in FY24. With better availability of supplies, new CNG model launches for PVs as well as CVs, strengthening of CNG infrastructure and the CNG penetration, it is further expected to increase levels of about 18% by CY27 from current levels of 15% penetration. This presents an exciting opportunity for Minda Westport going forward. Coming to financial and operation performance, you can refer to slide number seven and nine. At consolidated level, revenues from operation for the quarter ending March 24 increased by 31% year on year to 3,800 crores from 2,900 crores in Q4 FY23. The growth was evident across all product lines, with particularly strong performance from EV products, lighting, switch, sensor, controller, and allowable businesses. Some of the businesses which played a significant role in the substantial growth are primarily from one, capacity expansion and ramp up in four wheel alloy wheel, two wheel alloy wheel, four wheel lighting wheel plant, and four wheel chennai plant. Second, increase in revenues from EV specific products under Uno Minda Q1 controller. Third, market share gains in four wheel lighting business. Fourth, increase in fit value with higher sales of SUVs in passenger vehicles and premium model in two wheelers and last, increase in exports for seating and two-wheeler switch business. 
as you would have noted ebitda for the quarter for the record at 474 crores reflecting a 48% year over year improvement from 1019 crore besides benefit of operating leverage as normally expected the current quarter also benefited from yearly price increase settlements finance costs have increased to 32 crore in comparison to corresponding quarter last year on account of incremental borrowing for capex and working capital the depreciation has increased in line with capitalization of new projects the share of profit loss of associated jvs for quarter jumped to 58 crores as against 28 24 crores in q4 fy2 degree as denso roki westport trmn and tg all businesses witnessed significant growth along with turnaround in munda onkyo as you would see there is an exceptional income consequent to the decision of honorable supreme court that interest on cvd portion towards epcg liability is not payable the related provision has been reversed and this being a, a one time item uh, has been shown as an exceptional income the profit after tax which is uno munda share for the quarter was at 290 crores as against 183 crores however excluding the exceptional item from the profit the quarter would have been 269 crores as against 290 crores which is a growth of 40% year on year 47% moving to financials for fy24 we have achieved consolidated revenues of over 14000 crores for the year ending march 24 registering a growth of 25% on year on year basis we would like to highlight that industry volume growth for fy24 was 10% and against which we have grown by 2.5x significantly higher than our long term guidance of 1.5x the ebitda for the period grew by 28% at 1585 crores registering ebitda margins of 11.3% the profit after tax which is uno minda share for the period excluding exceptional item was at 861 crore as against 654 crores in corresponding period last year reporting a growth of 32% coming to the business segment wise performance starting with switches if you can refer to slide number 12 our switching system segment performed exceptionally well generating 963 crores in revenue for quarter representing a significant 25% of our consolidated revenues the segment grew 14% for fy24 generating revenues of 3663 crores as against 3203 crores in fy23 this growth can be attributed to smarter switches with increased number of switches per vehicle additionally exports in the tool segment emerged as a major growth driver signifying our global competitiveness Moving to lighting business, it continues to be a key growth driver for Uno Minda, generating impressive revenues of 972 crores during the quarter, representing a significant 26% contribution to our consolidated revenues. For full year, lighting business achieved revenues of 3,368 crores, growing by 31% on year-on-year basis. As communicated in past, we had some significant strategic order wins over past few years. These businesses are gradually commencing production. This is significantly propelling the growth trajectory of the lighting business, particularly in the four-wheel segment. Our lighting business has delivered significant growth in recent past, with four-wheel lighting business almost doubling in less than two years. This success is driven by our market-leading innovative lighting solutions, to that empowering OEMs to differentiate their offerings in the marketplace. We are currently supplying three long tail lamps and one signature LED front DRL for EV model of the largest TV EV manufacturer in India. This unique signature DRS comes with welcome and goodbye sequence and charging indicator. Buoyed by success in Indian market, some of these models are also being launched in global markets with manufacturing in these global geographies. We are confident that this positive momentum to continue, fueled by sustained SOP and continuous expansion of our market share. Moving to casting business, it delivered a robust revenues of 770 crores in Q4, accounting for a substantial 20% of our consolidated revenues. Out of 770 crores, four wheel loyal contributed 436 crores, two wheel 204, and casting business 130 crores. The casting business revenues for full year grew by 30% to 2830 crores. Both two wheel and four wheel loyal has been witnessing good growth, supported by capacity expansion. Four wheel alloy capacity stands at 390,000 wheels per month, running at almost 100% utilization. The 60k expansion at Bawal is delayed, with 30k expected to commission in second half of uh, FY25, and the work on remaining capacity will commence, depending on the necessary approval for land acquisition. 
We started construction for 120k wheel per month greenfield plant at upcoming auto hub IMT Karkoda, which will be commissioned in two phases of 60k each. The first phase is expected to be commissioned by Q2 FY26. Within alloy wheel, we are seeing preference for different varieties. During the quarter, we have received a large order for diamond finished alloy wheel from a Japanese OEM for the trade shift and a new EV model. Alloy wheel penetration in PV has reached around 45% from 15% when we entered the market. Along with the growth in market, we have cemented our position as the largest manufacturer of four-wheel alloy wheel in the country. At our two-wheel alloy wheel business, the additional capacity of 2 million was completed in the last quarter and is having stable operation. This expansion brings the total installed capacity for two-wheel alloy wheels to impressive 5.4 to 6 million wheels per year, depending on the weight of the wheel. With this additional capacity coming in, we have broken into the top three two-wheel alloy wheel manufacturer in terms of capacity and market share. Additionally, as you would have noted, board has also approved expansion of the plant by another 2 million wheel per annum with an investment of 300 crores. Over last few quarters, we have significantly diversified our customer base with around three, five key customers with business in both scooter and motorcycle segment. During the quarter, we received order for American two-wheel OEM model manufactured in India. Moving to seating business, a key contributor, uh, another uh, for our overall performance, generated around 264 crores in revenue, representing 7% of our console revenues. For full year, seating business revenue stands at 1,100 crores. Besides our existing incumbent two-wheeler OEMs, we have started supplies for two new age EV OEMs. These supplies for new incumbent two-wheeler OEM will start in the next six months. We are happy to inform that we have secured an order for a mechanical suspended seat and pneumatic suspended seat to be supplied to a domestic CV OEM. SOP of the said order is expected in Q3 FI25. Until now, we have been supplying suspended seats only to the export market. Exports continues to play a crucial role in driving the growth for seating business. We once again achieved export of around 200 crores from our seating business alone. Looking ahead, we anticipate seating business to maintain a healthy growth momentum fueled by new order confirmations and upcoming execution of new orders along with suspended seat order for the Indian market. Moving to acoustic uh, segment, generated revenues of 213 crores in Q4, representing a stable 6% contribution. Acoustic business also grew by 13% on a full year basis to 133 crores. While the Indian business continues to demonstrate industry-led growth, the European subsidiary Clarton Horn continues to experience ups and downs. Clarton Horn did close the year with positive note with a positive EBITDA impact for the quarter as well as for the year. Moving to other products and businesses, uh, which have achieved revenues of 613 crores for the quarter, contributing 16% of overall top line. Out of 613 crores, 130 crore was contributed by controllers, uh, 107 by sensors, 110 by blow molding, 68 crore by ADAS, 55 crores in the new EV baby. Besides above, the sales include aftermarket trading, external sales from Uno Minda, Capilac, and engineering sales in Europe, and batteries for aftermarket. Revenues for other seg business segments have grown by 50% to 2,236 as we continue to expand in emerging technologies. Over the years, we have built a very robust portfolio of sensors comprising of engine and exhaust sensors, active safety and comfort sensors, transmission and suspension sensors, CNG EV sensors, wheel speed sensors, and the latest addition is tire pressure monitoring system. Revenues from sensors have grown significantly from 160 crore in FR21 to over 400 crore now. We have combined ADAS division with sensors from operation perspective. Together with ADAS, sensors secured revenues of 600 crores. Our controller business continues to impress with, an, with achieving 375 crore sales for FR24. Uno Minda EV systems also clocked in 196 crore revenue in first full year of operation itself. Moving to aftermarket and international revenue, slide number 14 and 15 you can refer to. In terms of our revenue, 5 for the quarter ended March, 24 OEM business accounted for 93% and aftermarket at around 7%. Our aftermarket division revenue stood at 2 to 3 crore for the quarter. Our international sales currently represent approximately 14% of total revenue demonstrating steady growth in this segment. While the international market holds strategic importance for our future expansion, it is worth noting that our domestic business has been experiencing more pronounced growth. Moving to our debt levels, our net debt as of March 31 was at 1318 crores compared to 1078 as on March 23. 
The net debt has increased on account of expansion capex as well as expenditure for land bank, primarily at Pune and Hosur for around 220 crores. While sustaining and growth capex has been financed from business cash flows, expenditure primarily on land bank has resulted in incremental debt. Our net debt to equity stands at healthy 0.25. We have achieved growth of 19.8 percent. This is analyzing profits uh, of this is uh, annual profits of FY24. Kindly note that capital employed considered for calculation does include the capex for land bank as well as civil, which is currently not generating return. If one were to exclude only the strategic land bank, the ROC would have been around 20.3 percent. In terms of return on equity uh, for FY24, it stood at around 19.4%. The board has also recommended a final dividend of 1.35 per share, which is 67.5% of face value. Total dividend along with interim dividend already paid will become rupees 2 per share, which is 100% of the face value. We have been consistently increasing our dividend payout ratio from 10% in FY19 to 13.4% now. In last five years, our dividend payment amount also has increased fourfold from around 28 crores in FY19 to the estimated payment of around 115 crores for FY24. The board underscores our commitment to returning value to shareholders on a consistent basis. Moving to EV, you can refer to slide number 15 and 16. Revenue from EV to OEM increased to 180 crore in Q4 as against 167 in last quarter. We witnessed growth in EV-specific as well as traditional products sales to two-wheeler EV OEMs. The revenues from EV two-wheeler OEM is expected to continue to increase with SOP of various orders. We have built a strong order book for EV-specific products as well as existing products from EV OEMs. We have received further orders from our existing products from OEMs across vehicle categories. The SOP of these orders will start in gradual manner in FY25, which will further boost revenues from the EV sector. Building up our EV specific work portfolio for four wheelers, we had entered into a TLA star charge to manufacture and sale of EVSE in India. The EVSE comprises of wall mounted AC charges designed for convenient home charging. These charges are usually sold along with EV to customers by OEMs to provide ease of charging at home. Star charge is a global leader in electric vehicle charging infrastructure and microgrid solutions operating in 67 countries and regions with manufacturing facilities in USA, Vietnam, and China. With millions of EV charging stations installed worldwide, Star Charge is at the forefront of providing cutting-edge charging solutions for diverse applications. Star Charge has been a strategic partner of 60-plus well-known OEMs and multiple renowned energy companies globally. The potential fit value of these EVAC ranges from roughly 14,000 rupees to 70,000 rupees, with estimated application factor of 40%. We have multiple RXQs in hand for EVAC with high probability of winning some of them. According to the IEA, most EV charging demand globally has been met at home or at work and not by publicly accessible charges. Unomenda, in partnership with Stardust, aimed to revolutionize such home charging solution, paving the way for faster cleaner mobility adoption in India. In terms of capital expenditure, referred to slide number 24, as informed earlier, we have started construction at IMT Karpoda for our Greenfield Malawi plant for four wheelers. Though there was a delay in starting construction due to land acquisition, we will fast track the CapEx implementation given the land acquisition is completed and machinery order is in progress. The phase one of lighting for all plant at trade is expected to commission in second half of FY25 with construction going on in full speed. Regarding four wheelers, which plant Farooq Nagar Gurugram, phase one comprising of sub part manufacturing is completed. Given the humongous opportunities coming our way, we will continue our drive in FY25 as well. The capital expenditure are already announced projects like four wheel law wheel at Karpoda and Bawal, four wheel Atlantic plant at Pune, Uno Mindarika plant, Faruk Tangar, Uno Minda EV systems will be undertaken in FY25 as per plan. We are likely to further expand in Indonesia and aluminum die casting four wheel with fresh capex announcements in FY25. As mentioned earlier, pursuant to additional orders, the board has also approved capex of 300 crores for expansion of two wheel alloy plant at Supa uh, to add a capacity by another 2 million views uh, per year. This will take the total capacity to roughly 10.5 to 8 million views per annum. For FY25, uh, the sustaining capex is expected to be around 450 to 500 crores. 
and project capex of around 850-900 crores, including the expansion of two-wheel alloyable project approved today. In addition to above, we will continue building strategic land bank in locations like Gujarat, Hosur, and other related regions. Moving to strategic business update, the board has approved increasing stake in PG Minda from 47.93 to 49.9 by buying 1.97% stake in promoter held entity at a constitution of 17 crores. The remaining 50.1 stake in TG Minda is held by the JV partner TG. With respect to merger of POSAI entities with Uno Minda, we have received NOC from some of the exchanges and approval from lenders, creators, and shareholders. We have also moved the second motion application in NCLT. The next date of hearing is in the first week of August. And we expect that post the hearing, it will take another two to three months for merger process to get complete. Moving uh, forward, uh, the outlook continues to be promising with supporting industry volume guidance, commissioning and ramp up of multiple new expansions, namely EV plants, uh, two -wheel and four wheel alloy wheel expansion, lighting plant to Gujarat and Pune, etc. While we have been guiding on long term growth prospect of 1.5x of industry growth, we expect it could be higher in the near term. As you know, while quarter on quarter, there is variance in margins due to inherent business modalities and challenges, we would like to maintain our annual EBITDA margin guidance of 11% plus minus 50 basis point range with a bias towards higher end. With our existing diversified product portfolio, new product technologies, we are confident of sustained outperformance over long term. With this, I would like to now open up the floor for questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking the question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Mumukshman Lesha from Anurati Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity uh, and congratulate on strong margin performance and entry into the four wheeler EV segment, sir. Uh, so, firstly, uh, on the gross margin side uh, this quarter, uh, can you quantify the impact of price action? Sorry, come again, Mumuksh. Uh, can you uh, quantify the impact of price hike uh, uh, during this quarter, sir? There is no price hike, uh, Mumuksh, uh, that's what I, I, I think we said in the last call also. There are uh, normally, whatever are the customer price settlements, they normally tend to get uh, settled in the uh, last quarter of the year or maybe third quarter of the year. So you do see uh, little more uh, benefit in the, in the in the last quarter. If I have to quantify that impact, that is roughly around uh, 30 odd crores uh, during the quarter. Okay, sir. So now on the four wheeler EV uh, with the star charge now partnership. Uh, so uh, just want to understand how do you see the revenue trend for the star charge, and also uh, now uh, with the four wheeler EV focus area. Uh, so over a medium term, uh, uh, any guidance uh, you want to share how you plan to ramp up like in two wheeler you mentioned earlier. Yeah. So uh, I think Mumuks uh, by. Uh, End of next quarter, I think we will have uh, much, much, much better clarity because we have just signed the TLA and uh, the team is in process of uh, preparing the detailed project report. Uh, post that, we will have some uh, visibility, but still, you know that our dependence is there always on the OEMs and we normally don't comment on the, on the numbers uh, in terms of the expected revenues. But uh, in terms of the entire product profile, because the star charge is only uh, one part of it. We already have a lot of other uh, products uh, which currently are uh, in the works and uh, some of them are also in, in operation. So maybe we'll give you a full picture uh, where we have our results uh, call after Q1. Got it, sir. Uh, sir, Lightning segment is seeing a strong growth. Uh, so just want to get a sense, uh, uh, how is the profitability in that segment? Uh, uh, you know, earlier it used to be like a high single digit uh, sometime back. So uh, how that has changed, sir? Is this the uh, uh, lighting as a more profitable segment among the other segments? Sir? I wish <laughs> it was. 
but i think uh, we have discussed this in in past also uh, first of all uh, just to put some background we know that the kit value for the lighting products as it moved from halogen to led has increased significantly and with a lot of uh, bought out component in terms of uh, uh, electronics and i think uh, that has been the key reason why we said that uh, the margin in the four wheel lighting business specifically which is seeing that kind of growth is below average margins so which is continues to be there okay just and lastly i mean on lighting part uh, i mean we seeing a very good pick up uh, on the new orders can you just guide how do you see the next year in terms of growth for this business so this business is uh, i think we have been saying uh, very uh, candidly that we are very very bullish on this business uh, with multiple uh, i would say uh, tailwinds and also in terms of getting more business tailwind in terms of uh, transition from halogen to led increase in kit value going multi fold and also share of business gains so we are very very optimistic especially in four wheel lighting business you know we are currently in process of uh, commissioning uh, not constructing not commissioning constructing our third uh, plant for lighting for us once that is up and running that will give us the uh, give us uh, the boost in fact uh, even at the plant in uh, gujarat uh, which we have put up it's almost running out to the capacity if the plant was commissioned only what one and a half years back uh, or two years back so this business will continue to grow and our goal has been to reach 20% share of business uh, at as a first first milestone and i think we are on track to achieve that Right. Just any any guidance, any growth guidance for FY25? Uh, what kind of growth we can see for lighting, sir? I think most the same thing. He said we okay. don't comment specifically on numbers, so my okay. apologies for that. Yeah. Uh, no. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thanks so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Siddharth Bera from Nomura. Please go ahead. Yeah. So thanks for the opportunity and uh, congrats on a great set of numbers. uh sir on this lighting side first uh, just to continue the last question uh, i mean if you look at the current uh, quarter and just analyze it so it uh, it implies a close to 60 70% growth for the next year and uh, we also have this new plant which is coming up uh, in the second half which you mentioned so uh, i mean can you throw some more light on to which are the orders which are ramping up here and does this mean that i mean this segment can grow at more than 30% probably in the coming few years So absolutely, uh, Siddharth. Uh, first of all, thanks for the compliment. Uh, in terms of uh, growth, uh, whether it is 30 percent or 20 percent, you know that uh, a lot also depends on the industry volume. So it's very very difficult to say whether it will be 20 or whether it will be 30. But definitely, it will outperform industry growth by margin. If you see last year itself, uh, the four lighting business have done annual revenues of roughly around uh, uh, 1,200 crores odd. and uh, the last quarter itself uh, we have done something like 380 390 or close to we can say 400 crores so with that itself i think uh, we are poised for that uh, kind of number what you said but uh, a lot also depends on the uh, industry volume so while we are optimistic maybe we are able to uh, achieve that but very difficult to comment whether it will be 30 or it will be 20 or 25 Okay, so uh, can you provide the breakup between four wheeler and two wheeler, and where are you, are you seeing the most traction here? Obviously, four wheeler lighting is uh, the more uh, traction. The dark uh, two wheeler lighting, we already are like twenty five percent plus kind of market share domestically, and uh, we already have much higher penetration in two wheeler in LED. So there is not much of scope in terms of value enhancement. So it is the four wheeler lighting business which you will see outperforming by a huge margin. And sir, how much was it in the last quarter? Four wheeler. Oh, four wheeler lighting last quarter. I said I think three eighty three ninety crore was the four wheeler lighting business in India. Okay, okay. So sequentially, the last quarter Q three also you had mentioned about three forty crores from four wheeler. So has the delta come more from the two wheeler? Is it? No, no. So three forty to three ninety. I am saying is only uh, four wheeler. Yeah, yeah. But uh, our revenues have grown from 850 to 970, so nearly 120 crores. Yeah, so that also includes uh, Siddharth, uh, the overseas uh, lighting business in ASEAN and also in Europe. So that is overall group lighting business. Oh. What we are referring to is the Indian uh, 340 crores, the Indian lighting business. Okay, got it, got it. 
So second question is on the seating side. Uh, again, I mean, uh, uh, we have seen good improvement in industry volumes and two-wheelers and CVs, but uh, our li- seating revenue seems to have been quite flattish uh, sequentially. So uh, some thoughts here. I mean, you have said that uh, you have won a couple of orders. If you can quantify what is the size of these orders and how to think about the growth here. So the new order which we have got, which from the Indian CV uh, customer is roughly around 80 to 100 crores a year, depending on the on the volumes. Uh, plus uh, the quarter on quarter number, I appreciate. Yes, it is uh, flattish, but uh, that's what I think we have seen in terms of uh, the CV volumes also, which have been actually negative in the last quarter. So the sitting business uh, revenue is almost half comes from the uh, CVOR segment. Plus, uh, there has been uh, some headwinds in terms of the exports. While we are the global uh, supplier to JD, and there is a lot of exports, uh, that has not been seeing significant volumes of take. In fact, it has been more static to negative so in terms of volume. So, uh, while uh, we have got business in hand, I think it's the volumes which you know are not in our hands. I'm not trying to justify, but I, uh, that is the key reason why the revenues are flattish. Okay. Okay. So lastly, I mean, the two-wheeler ala capex, which is said about 300 crores, I think the last capex of similar size was about 190 crores. So why the capex intensity seems to be slightly higher here? And lastly, on this aftermarket revenues, we have not seen much improvement over the last one year. Revenues seem to be around that uh, 270 to 80 type of run rate. So any thoughts what will drive this or what are you thinking here? Thanks. No, no, you're right. I think both the questions are very, very genuine to that. So first of all, the two-wheeler lighting uh, project, which uh, was announced at 190 crore, it was actually ended at 225 crores. Uh, by the time it got completed, there were significant uh, cost overruns. And for that 225 crores, uh, the land was already part of the first uh, acquisition. So there was no land cost in, in, in the second phase. Now when we are buying, uh, setting up this uh, new expansion, we have to buy this 13 acre of land from uh, MIDC. Plus, over last uh, three years, there has been a significant increase in the cost of uh, uh, construction and also uh, the machinery, etc. So, while we tried and uh, tried to optimize a lot of uh, things, plus also what is happening is in this uh, expansion, there is a, uh, a powder coating uh, extra which was not there in the first phase. So, if you see there is one specific customer so who uses this uh, wheel, uh, two-wheeler wheel uh, for a uh, scooter, with a different technology of uh, coating, which uh, the cost is higher than the traditional uh, covering, while it does get compensated through better pricing, but the overall cost increases. So that is in terms of uh, capex. And in terms of aftermarket, yes, you are right. Uh, the aftermarket uh, revenues, despite our significant push uh, in terms of increasing the sales, have not uh, seen a significant traction uh, over last uh, one year. Uh, but if you see the industry, barring one or two players, I think the numbers have been like uh, that. People have not grown significantly. So while there was a significant growth year before, this year, uh, which is FY24, has been flattish. But we are expecting FY25 to be much better than what uh, we have done in FY24. Got it, sir. Thanks a lot. I'll come back with you. Thanks, that. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to one or two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, we would request you to rejoin the queue. The next question is from the line of Raghunandan NL from Nuwama Research. Please go ahead. Uh, Thank you, sir, and congratulations on strong set of numbers. So may I request, uh, sorry to interrupt you, sir. May I request you to use your handset, sir. Your audio is slightly muffled. Uh, is it better now? Yes, sir. Thank you. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, congratulations, sir. Uh, firstly, uh, within the other segment, uh, uh, you know, the sensor, controller, and ADAS part uh, have done very well this year. How do you see the outlook for FI25? And secondly, in terms of the EV order book, uh, congratulations on the increase from 3,300 to 3,700. Uh, if you can give some more color uh, with, with you know, like uh, addition for orders of uh, traction motors, motor controller, how do you see the ramp up for this particular opportunity? And if you can 
indicate you know how many customers you have got uh, on the motor side uh, just some color on how you see the growth ahead yeah yeah thanks uh, ragu uh, in terms of the other segment as you know these are businesses which are primarily the sunrise businesses uh, which is uh, maybe sensors and controllers the application is going very very high all the ev products are also part of uh, this segment so we are very optimistic in terms of uh, the growth of some of these businesses and as we move forward normally our barometer is once a business crosses 10% of total revenues we start uh, showing this separately as a segment so i'm pretty sure in next few years uh, we should be having one or two businesses who will actually cut into that uh, category and in terms of uh, the ev order book uh, the large part of the orders which we have secured in the last quarter is primarily from the uh, existing uh, businesses which are the ev agnostic businesses while they are from all the ev players uh, but uh, nothing significant from the ev specific product uh, perspective and in terms of uh, the motor business uh, while we have got a couple of uh, new customers on board the sop of uh, those the onboarding will happen in, in, in business which occurred in the last quarter primarily the sop will happen sometime in uh, uh, the second half of fy25 i think one customer is in q2 itself and the rest i think are in the second half of fy25 in terms of uh, motors and uh, sorry in terms of motor controllers and others uh, there is going to be a, a significant ramp up in the current uh, year as as i have discussed uh, there these some of these products have gone into production in the last uh, year and some of them will get into production in this year and as i said in the first year itself uh, this uh, jv has clocked revenues of close to 200 crores and uh, we are pretty optimistic that uh, it will have a significant growth in the coming years uh thank you for that sir and a couple of quick clarifications one is uh, that 30 crore price settlement which was received in q4 uh instead of looking at q4 gross margin it would be better to look at full year at 524 margin uh, to get a uh, you know normalized uh, level would that be a right understanding absolutely ragu i think you are you have said what i wanted to say in fact uh, that is what i always say that and i think i said in my commentary as well that uh, we are in a business where quarter to quarter you might see there is a variation in terms of margins because we are not a uh, a b2c company so there are uh, times when uh, the settlement takes time there are times when prices go north there are times when prices go south uh, in terms of the commodity pricing so there are various factors but everything gets evened out on a full year basis so that's why it's very important to see the full year profitability and that's where we have improved by almost 25 basis points uh, on a full year basis so i would say that is more uh, realistic and i appreciate uh, you asking that question uh, thank you for that sir and uh, in terms of uh, you know uh, because you are adding capacities to meet the strong demand there will be some upfront cost but but you know like over a period of 2 2 to 3 years how do you see the triggers for the uh, margin so we are very very uh, optimistic ragu uh, uh, and as i said and as i think i said in the commentary also while our margin guidance uh, has been 11% plus minus 50% i said uh, for fy 24 25 uh, we would tilt it towards uh, the upper end of that uh, range and as we move forward and as, as you rightly mentioned a lot of these projects once they come on to stream normally we see the third year of uh, production as a stable third full year production as a stable operation and that's where you expect that uh, business to deliver its uh, expected uh, volumes and uh, profitability so as we move forward and as these capexes all come online gradually ideally we should see some uh, uptick in margins uh, uh, benefiting from the operating leverage and also scales higher scale uh just on the margin side a last question uh you know in terms of uh, the revenues are going up for ev specific parts so so uh, any benefits we can expect either in 25 or 26 from the pli incentives uh so as we speak a uh, lot of our products are actually uh, while they are eligible in pli uh we are at a threshold of that uh, 50% dva plus minus uh, 3 4 percentage points so we are working on to see how we improve our dva to meet that criteria 
of domestic value at 50 percent i think that is the only key reason which is uh, holding us back there are some of the products which we are expecting approval from the government uh, maybe in this quarter itself but they are not very significant so i'm not uh, counting on that so and secondly uh, for uh, there is one product which qualifies uh, the dva major product i'm referring to is motors but for that you need to have stable operations uh, because they see an audit what is your exact uh, dva etc so that also hopefully we should be able to apply in the next year got it sir thank you so much and uh, best wishes thanks thanks sir thank you the next question is from the line of ashish jain from macquarie please go ahead sir ashish jain your line has been unmuted would request you to unmute your line from your side please hello hello yes sir we are unable to hear you so may i request that you use your handset am i audible now uh, no sir we are unable to hear you sir Sashi Jain, may I request that you use your headset? So may I request that we move to the next participant, uh, Mr. Sashi Jain? We would request you to rejoin the queue, please. The next question is from the line of Ashutosh Tiwari from Equiris Securities. Please go ahead. Mr. Ashutosh Tiwari, may we request you to go ahead with your question? Yeah, hi, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, hi, sir. Congrats on such an exemplary performance during the quarter, yes. and also probably uh, nobody would have imagined the kind of growth we have seen in lighting segment few years back, or even sensor controller. I think uh, these are really very, very uh, strong growths we did over the, over the last few years. and first time we cross the lighting when you cross the even switches segment revenue so um, i my first question and and probably questions of these two segments only how do you see going ahead uh, sensor control shaping up for the next few years and also lighting segment so thank you sir uh, lighting segment uh, definitely continues uh, to grow uh, and will continue to grow as uh, we speak over next 4 uh, to 5 years the key uh reason i think we have just discussed also is uh, the kit value gain the new business and also the expected share of business gains uh, moving from 14 to 15% share of business to 20% is not going to be easy while we do believe that we do have uh, got uh, businesses in fold and it's only matter of time uh, we will uh, reach that uh, goal post of earning 20% share of business the kit value also has been expanding so uh, we do expect uh, this momentum to continue but uh, as i said <laughs> the only uh, what you call the moving part is uh, the volumes of the model which we have secured the business so if if that uh, remains on track uh, i am sure we will be able to deliver the growth uh, in lighting business as we have done in past uh, what was the second question sensor controller i think we have done roughly uh, 775 crores put together Yeah, so sensor controller also uh, also is doing phenomenally well. Uh, sensor uh, and controller business uh, both are uh, uh, seeing a significant addition of uh, new business. Controller, uh, you know, some of the EV product business which are part of uh, UML are also into that uh, business like uh, your telematics or wireless chargers. And there are a lot of other uh, businesses which are part of uh, this uh, business which continues to grow. And also now we have. Uh, aligned adas uh, business also with uh, the control because there's also uh, soil sensor which also has lot of sensor and related uh, stuff so sensor and adas internally we have aligned as a single business and as a sensor also uh, the number of sensor application has been consistently going up and as you may have noted we have also added one more product to our kit it is tire pressure monitoring system sensor yeah. and uh, we have already secured a business from one of the largest oem in the country So hopefully that should also go into production sometime in the next year. So I think you mentioned that in the fourth quarter the controller was 130 crores and sensor was 100 crores, right? No, no. Yeah, fourth quarter okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. So we already hitting 920 crores rented in the last quarter. So I think uh, this business also overall will grow very strongly. Like, can we assume like say? 
ट्वेंटी परसेंट प्लस कैन ग्रोथ इन दिस बिजनेस ओवर द नेक्स्ट फ्यू इयर्स I would uh, definitely like to work on 15-20% kind of growth, uh, assuming the industry volumes also support. Okay, okay. And lastly, um, on this alloy wheel, uh, four wheeler uh, business, um, uh, don't we think that we are probably a bit behind in terms of uh, in terms of capacity addition because uh, the way is ramping up and the way we are operating. we probably have to force in the things so obviously there's some delay due to this land uh, equation and all but going ahead we probably we have to probably drive ahead of what uh, we're guiding right now no absolutely as you are right and that has been the feeling in that the organization uh, because this is a business i, I we, we all know uh, we've been thinking very very closely for last four we've been running like hand to mouth situation and this is not a good situation to be in Uh, while it is good that before the project is announced, uh, even your surplus capacity gets blocked. But that's what the market is giving, and if we are not ready, we might lose the business. So we have been uh, now working very aggressively in, in building this land bank. A large part of this is also identified for alloy wheel. So while we are putting this 120k project in Karkoda as of now, the space and everything what we have earmarked uh, can grow up to 240,000 uh, wheels a year. In in addition. we might soon have to even expand our uh, plant in uh, gujarat given the volumes are being ramping up there so there also we might see some sort of uh, expansion in the uh, current fiscal year so but for your point taken we have to be little more aggressive in our capacity addition in the four wheel alloy segment and just one more thing on this menda uh, west sport that cng kit business you mentioned the sales was 177 crores in the fourth quarter yeah. am i quarter no no i just missed the sales number you mentioned some sales number for fully full year. Full year. okay and that also will grow uh, quite fast uh, yeah yeah this is a high margin business as well right yeah little uh, obviously above average margin and i am pretty confident over next few years this also has a potential to 400 to 500 or so stand up for 100 okay 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 thanks and congratulations and all the best for the next Three five three to five euro growth. We are delivered extremely Thanks. strong. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashish Jain from Macquarie. Please go ahead, sir. Hi, sir. Good evening. Am I audible now? Very faint, Ashish. So let me try increasing the volume from my side. Yes, sir. You can go ahead. Sir, my question was again, you know, on the lighting business. Uh, is it possible to? You know, give a sense of uh, volume growth versus value growth that we have seen in the four-wheeler lighting business, particularly. Very difficult to, uh, to say, Ashish, volume growth versus value growth, because even if this is a business currently we are, or the momentum we are in, even if the industry doesn't grow, this business will grow. But the uh, only uh, issue is that the businesses we are tied up has to grow more. For example, and why I'm saying I think you would have heard in my commentary. I said we have got three like long tail lamps. Like these tail lamps, the cost is almost eighteen to twenty thousand rupees, uh, almost like uh, per tail lamp. Whereas uh, the other model, if it's a halogen lamp, it's costing two and a half thousand. So if the volume of that model goes up, then obviously your destiny is uh, linked there. So very difficult to say what volume will grow and how much uh, your sales will grow. uh but my point is even if volume doesn't grow i think this business will continue to grow but only issue is uh the growth of that high value business uh, which is not in our hand and that's why it's very difficult to say i think uh, the other colleague also has uh, other friend also asked this question how much of uh, growth we should expect uh, in the next quarter or the next year so as i said while we are gearing up uh, our capacities for uh, the kind of growth you expect It's very very difficult to say whether it will be twenty eight percent or twenty five percent or thirty percent growth. Right, sir. But you know, is it safe? So, given the kind of model launches we are seeing, and particularly the product you spoke about, that is, uh, you know, really uh, seeing high penetration and all. So, is it safe to assume that the way industry is moving in terms of model launches and these kind of features, uh, this is like a structural thing, and there is no reason for us to believe it will slow down? No, well, absolutely. If you see some of the global markets, you see the ASEAN markets. You go to Korea or Japan or other countries also. I am not looking at commenting on the developed world, which has more affordability. 
I am commenting on market which does not have more affordability there. Also, you see the long connected uh, tail lamps is uh, penetration is very high. So yes, it might be a case where there may be a structural shift, but it all gets driven by the customer preference and also whether the customer is willing to pay that that uh, delta. But yes, it, it could be, but uh, difficult to comment on because as of now, not many vehicles have got these connected long tail lamps or headlamps. The second question was on switches business. Like if I look at the last uh, three quarters, uh, switches business has been, you know, pretty much flattish in that, you know, 900 or so kind of time. So how are we seeing that progressing uh, from here on? Yeah, so switch uh, business, we all know that uh, we are actually having a, a lion's share uh, almost in both the segments, uh, be it four-wheeler or a two-wheeler, both are above 50% market share. So obviously to gain beyond that market share is difficult, but even if you see, despite that challenge, even on a quarter and quarter basis, this business has grown from uh, 930-odd crores almost, and roughly like 3 to 4%, it has grown quarter and quarter. So, I think uh, while uh, your point is uh, valid, sir, but I don't think I can compare this business with a light business where this, there is a structural change. So, but if you see year on year, uh, on a full year basis, this business has actually grown 14%. Uh, whereas uh, the industry, if you see average blended of PV and uh, tooler has not uh, grown uh, with those levels, uh, maybe it's like 8 to 10%. So, still there is an outperformance in this uh, despite and this is despite the exports uh, are currently not to the quantum what we have expected. So this business definitely uh, is not, as I said, uh, in the in the very very high growth trajectory by alloy like alloys and uh, uh, lights, but it will continue to outperform the industry volumes supported with uh, the kit value and exports. Got it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rishi Vora. From Kotak Securities, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, hello, sir. Uh, congratulations on good set of numbers. Uh, my first question Thanks. is pertaining to uh, EV segment. Uh, can you just throw some light on how currently you are seeing the demand trends given the uh, reduction in the fame uh, subsidies? And also, in your order book, uh, can you broadly give us indication on like what amount of uh, order book is from uh, the incumbent two wheeler OEMs and what part would be from the new age OEMs? So, Rishi, first of all, very difficult to comment on, on demand, and I think uh, you would have seen consistently we don't comment on, on industry volumes, uh, what is the kind of penetrations or volume, etc. Uh, we don't try and guess our customers. Uh, but in terms of uh, the EV order book, uh, remember we normally don't uh, comment on uh, order book also, but we have started commenting on EV order book because there was a request from every corner to do that. Right. So I would request not to <laughs> further ask to split that uh, information. So I, I think even this information, I, we have been discussing internally uh, uh, as to how long we should uh, continue to give. Uh, and if if you all of you are okay, I would at some point I would like to stop that also because this does not give a full picture of the organization because uh, we are uh, today almost a, a twenty thousand crore organization and aspiring aspiring to become multifold from here. And uh, when I give only this uh, EV volume, I am commenting on only a fraction of the total uh, business, so which might be okay, which might not be okay. So I mean, we are sort of trying to uh, to debate ourselves as to how long we continue this. But my humble request, please not push us to give a further split of these numbers. Uh, understood, sir. Uh, and uh, just on the uh, you know gross margin side, uh, you know we have seen uh, some uptick in uh, the metal base metal prices recently. Uh, obviously, uh, our alloy wheel business uh, will have some dependence on aluminium. But apart from that, would, which would be major commodities for us? And are we seeing any inflation currently uh, in, 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 in those elements? So, you see, this is part and parcel of life. Yes, you are right. Recently, aluminium prices have seen a spike. Uh, but uh, most of our uh, businesses, you know, uh, during this uh, commodity high period post-COVID, I think three years back, we have tried to align all our contracts with the customers with the annual price escalation, quarterly or hourly price escalation clauses. So on a full year basis, almost 95% uh, gets passed through to our customers. So that is not a, a, any concern for us. Uh, so if prices goes up, we try and collect from customers. If prices go down, we share with the customers. So uh, from that perspective, uh, 
I think we are pretty healthy. Understood. And so, just last uh, data question: What would be the full year revenues for four wheeler and two wheeler alloy wheel business? Uh, you might have shared, but I just missed that those numbers. For four wheeler and two wheeler alloy wheel business. Yeah, revenues, full year revenues. Okay. So, two wheeler alloy wheel business full year revenues is uh, around six hundred and seventy crores. Right. And uh, four wheel. Four wheel is uh, roughly around thirteen hundred and fifty crores. Understood. Thank you, sir. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nishit Jalan from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Aminda Kothiya. Yeah. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, just to correct the uh, number which I have given, thirteen fifty crore was for Minda Kosai only. Yeah, Nishit, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, congratulations on good set of numbers, uh, Mr. Bora. My question is that you have grown so so uh, sm- uh, faster compared to the industry growth. What are your market share of segments now, uh, especially the bigger segments, the lighting, the alloy wheel, the tool, or the heating business? And uh, yes, sir. Your audio is not clear, sir. May I request you to use your handset, please? Hello, I'm already in handset. Uh, is it better? Yes, sir. It keeps breaking. Uh, may I request you to use your handset in case you're using a headset, sir? Thank you. Is it better? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Yeah, um, my question was that you have grown uh, ahead of industry and across almost all segments over the last few years. So, just wanted to understand what would be your market share. Across different segments now, alloy wheel, lighting, uh, seating, uh, 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 and maybe se- sensors and controllers. I would assume you are very small right now, and there's a long, t- uh, lot of growth potential. So, how are the market shares in these three categories, uh, in both two wheeler and four wheeler, and how it has moved in the last three years? Or any any data point you can give us on this would be very helpful. Yeah. So, my uh, the market share in uh, four wheel alloy wheel is over 40% uh, as we stand today. Uh, in terms of market share for two wheeler we are roughly at around 15 16% uh, we are just uh, 6 billion and i am analyzing the capacity not actual uh, sales for uh, 2024 uh, 6 million on roughly 35 uh, million kind of our consumption uh, we will be roughly at around 15% market share because i am almost running at capacity uh, for two wheeler will be In terms of lighting, two wheeler we are roughly around 25-26 percent, and uh, four wheeler we are roughly around 15-16 percent, 16-17 percent now. And seating, you mentioned you are above 50 percent in both the categories, right? No, seating we are uh, above 50 percent primarily in CVOR, not in the two wheeler. Okay. Okay. And uh, just you just mentioned that. Uh, 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 uh one question was that uh, lot of industry leading passenger vehicle oems are talking about a very very low growth in the passenger vehicle industry this year even sam has talked about only about 2 3% kind of a growth uh, are you seeing any 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 such slow down in in the volumes industry volumes or on the production schedule so what would be your view in general about the about the industry growth So uh, as I said, uh, uh, Mr. Said we don't comment on uh, industry volumes, but uh, I can say what volumes we have been guided by the customers to plan for 24-25. Okay. Uh, and they they tend to be uh, little low in uh, PV segment, which is five uh, to seven percent, and uh, for two wheeler segment it is seven to ten percent. But as I said, these are guidance from our customers to be prepared with the capacity. Now, whether how much actually will happen, I think. Got uh, it. I think our customers are best yeah, to respond to that. Correct. Correct. And just uh, one number I missed out. What did you talk about the FY25 uh, capex? Uh, was it 850 crores for project capex and 450 crores maintenance? Is that correct? Yes. So total 1300 crores. Yeah, 13 to 14. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraint, that was the last question for the question and answer session. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thanks, uh, uh, everyone. So I would like to thank everyone for joining on the call. I hope we have been able to respond to all your questions adequately. For any further information, we request you to please do get in touch with us. Stay safe, stay healthy, and thank you once again for joining with us.
thank you. On behalf of Uno Minda Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.